So it seems that you need help. <laughs> This video is all about sewing together, seaming together your panels, your squares, whatever. I've got a solid granny uh, here, a classic granny. You can sew them together. You can sew them in separate blankets. We've got a pattern for that as well as our pattern for our garden party afghan. This technique will work if you have multiple colors or just all the same solid color. It's going to hide. So this is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you how to do it. So this is the right side and this is the wrong side right here so you don't see anything it's all flat let me get rid of that needle it's all flat and smooth i really truly think it's the easiest we're going to do that together here today on good knit kisses by the way i'm Kristen, and thanks for coming see you in a moment welcome to good knit kisses we're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches Let's sew an invisible flat seam together. You're gonna need your granny squares and some yarn and a tapestry needle. I like this one that's slightly bent, has a little bit of a blunt end to it. And the yarn, um, I can use a contrasting yarn just to show you on the camera here today, but you know, I would pick probably one of these colors. And if you have multiple colors in here, it's really not gonna matter because this is going to be buried and not seen. Um, I would pick one of the colors in your project. Again, this is just for camera purposes. The way uh, you know how much yarn to pull out, you're going to want to measure your square and do three times the amount of yarn for that. So I have enough to cover uh, these two across here. I'm going to lay them all out and what I would do is get enough uh, to go across all of them and have my tails and then I would do the vertical ones and cut those separate. Uh, you can also connect more yarn as you go if you need to do that um, but this is the way I like to do it in one fell swoop. All right, so uh, go ahead and place your um, squares all right side up the way that you want them facing. Um, just doesn't matter which one it is, whatever, but face them how you want to face them. And you're going to take your um, two, we're just going to do two at a time here. So take them and put the right sides together. So I'm just going to turn this, close it like a book. And then we're going to be looking at this edge right here. We have this like a book and you can see my stitches along the edge. You have the V-shaped stitches running this way and on this sample they're running the opposite way. You're going to line them up. Your uh, stitch count is going to be the same on both of these. Um, if it's like accidentally one more or less, that's okay. You can just usually skip one on the other one and then keep going. Um, we've got our wrong sides together. So we're going to be looking at the outermost loop. So on uh, this one up here, we're looking at this back loop. And then when you're on uh, this one here, just remember that the outside or wrong side is over here. And so the outside loop is this one. So we're not going through both stitches. We're going through the outermost loop. Okay. And then we're going to be um, going in one direction, go through both of those loops. And then when you come back around to the next one, you actually enter in from the opposite sides. So you're going to enter in from this way and it's going to just zigzag through those stitches all the way until the end. Now, this particular one is, uh, these are two classic grannies. If you had the solid granny, you're going to have a different amount of stitches in the corners. That's okay. Just count your stitches on both of them. Make sure you have the same amount and then you'll just one for one go right across. All right, that's it. Let's start on connecting these. So on this first one, I'm going to find my corner stitch. So there's three in here. So I'm just going to go to this very middle one here. And then this is the outward bump. See how there's two of them here. The outward loop is this one. And then we want to find that stitch over here. One, two, three. This is the middle one. There's that back bump. And here we go. Pull through until you have a tail. And then we're going to come enter from this side that we just pulled out from. And you can see the loop is right next to it. Okay. And then we're going to pick up this loop here on this side. Once you pick up the first few, it's easy to tell. Go ahead and pull this through. And I just leave it loose for now so you can see that. And then go into the next loop on the same side you came out from. Pick up the one on the back sample and pull it through. You can see the little S shape. It's zigzagging through. Let's pick up another one and pick up the pace a little bit. So I'm just working 
all the way down the line. Make sure you get all of the strand. Don't split that. Don't pick up any other loops, just those two. So you just keep working back and forth like this. Okay, and then when we come to this corner here, I'm gonna show you how to add on another set of squares. All right, pause your video, I'll see you there. Okay, so I've got my corner here and a corner on my new set of squares. I'm gonna hold both with my other hand. And we're going to go into this corner loop here, the very middle, so I'm gonna count my chains here. We've got uh, one, two, three, so it's actually this one in the back loop. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that on through. And now I'm gonna look at this corner, and I have three chains, one, two, three, and I need to be in this loop here. So I'm gonna come in and approach it from this direction because I came from that direction before into that loop, pull through. All right, now I've got them semi-connected here. Now we're gonna go uh, back through this way. This is the next corner loop, the outside loop, and then we're gonna go in the outside loop here and pull through. And now coming back, we're going to go from that side again and get that back loop or outside loop and then this outside loop here and just keep going. So you're doing exactly what you did down here. And then once you get to the end, I'll meet you there and I'll show you tightening it up. And then we'll uh, make this other part across to connect them in a square formation. All right, pause your video. I will see you there. All right, pulling through that last one and let's open it up and tighten it. So I'm gonna pull on my beginning strand and my end, tighten them up and I can kind of slide this on down. Look at that. And so this is where we would want to make sure um, of our tension. Um, go ahead and kind of ease that fullness. Make sure it's not too um, pulled in tightly there. I like to kind of pull these out, give it a little bit of a tug, okay? So it accommodates it. And then make sure this is right where I want it. I go ahead and leave these tails in here at a manageable length. You know, you can you can cut that off, but leave them in there and don't tie them in. Don't um, don't completely weave in the tails until you have finished uh, seaming all of your lines, just in case uh, you need to make any other adjustments and have a little bit of wiggle room. All right, so um, we're going to work on the um, this this line now. We just did the vertical, and now we're going to do the horizontal or vice versa. It doesn't really matter. Again, you're going to put your right sides together. So we're going to do that, sandwich it in half, and then you're going to begin again, okay? So you're just gonna start in this corner, work your way through them, serpentining, going around. I'm gonna go ahead and start mine, and then I'm gonna show you how I pick up in the middle here, and then I'll show you what the final looks like, all right? So um, go ahead and attach yours, and when you get to this intersection, pause your video, um, and I'll meet you there. See you in a moment. Okay, so I'm coming down to this intersection here. It looks like I've got a couple of stitches right before that middle point. So I'm gonna come through this one right here and come through. And I still have to pull through uh, this one. So there's my outside stitch. Okay, I'm gonna jump over, go through this stitch that already had one there. I'm just gonna reinforce that corner. And then I'm gonna go through um, this stitch right here. Um, I could reinforce this corner again, but I'm sort of like having to backtrack and put it in a kind of a different spot. And so um, I just want to put it in this one because it's a little easier. And I don't want it to kind of jog on the outside when I open it up. So I'm just going to go with a straight shot to the next one. All right. So um, this one I came out here. So I'm going to go, um, I may have to rotate it and see, but this is the outside stitch here. There we go. And... Let's go for the next outside stitch. And it's, I'm gonna pull through because I can see it easier. Usually when I get to this area that are a little harder, sometimes I'll go through that one panel first and then the next one. So here's the next one I pick up. This is an outside stitch, but it's kind of hidden. So now I found it and I'm gonna find the next one. And then come over here. And I feel like I might have missed a, store, a stitch in the corner. So I'm gonna go through this again because apparently I didn't have enough uh, chains on that one but that that can happen right we're human so now I'm going to go to the next one pick that stitch up and the outside 
on this one is hard to see for some reason. So I want to go into this loop and keep going. So it's the same as before. Once you get past those corner stitches, you should be able to see it pretty well, but you have to kind of just pick out and look at it carefully. So go ahead and finish that up. I will meet you back when I've got it ready to pull together. All right, see you in a moment. All right, I'm pulling through my last corner stitch and let's open this up. Uh, this is the one that we just did and now I'm going to pull tight on those. Okay, I'm going to pull these. So now we have these stitches all joined together and um, there we go. One at a time I think is working out a little bit better. Yeah. All right, so you can see that I have already got it um, cinched up or eased up how I want on the fullness here, and it's ready to um, weave in your tails, and then you want to wash and block it, and those uh, tails will actually stay locked in much better using it that way. Using a tapestry needle instead of a crochet hook and weaving into individual stitches will make it last a lot longer. Now, you can see a little bit of the uh, white through here, and of course, that's just for demonstration purposes only. You'll want to use a matching yarn to your project. Well, I hope you found that helpful. If you want the patterns for the granny square blanket or the garden party blanket, uh, be sure and go click down below in the description. If you enjoy this video, please hit that subscribe button. I'm so glad you came today. Be sure and comment down below and let us know if you enjoyed the technique or tag us at Good Knit Kisses on Instagram. We'd love to see what you've made. We'll see you soon and happy crochet. Bye everyone. Thanks for joining us today where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.